Hey Dan, if you don't mind, can we spend a couple of minutes early to talk a little bit about the Harbor Review and then I'll jump off and have a conflicting meeting, uh, if that's okay. Sorry to be hijacking part of the agenda. You're on mute. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Uh, I'll, I'll take you gonna, your answer uh, on mute and I'll just say you said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you bet. Uh, I need to um, get everybody um, set up here and pointing in the right direction. Um, but uh, yes, get uh, everything set up today. Real quick. Um, Michael, while I'm uh, getting uh, things configured. Um, why don't you sort of uh, tee up um, where you are and uh, if you have any um, additional action items you know, coming out of the assessment. Um, and then I can fill in the blanks on our end. Yeah, so essentially we have a PR uh, that's basically ready and we want uh, the leadership from the um, uh, from Six Security to take a look at that uh, and, and approve it. Uh, all the reviewers need to uh, also approve it as well. Uh, and that's really the last step in basically completing the harbor assessment. So I'm gonna put the PR, uh, I'm putting it in chat here. If you can add it to the agenda, that'd be great. Uh, great. Uh, but essentially it includes three things. Uh, the PR includes, the couple of images, it includes the assessment in Markdown, um, uh, which has been reviewed and, you know, 400 plus comments, if not more, were addressed and, and, and updated as part of this. Uh, so now it's, you know, the final thing. And then the last thing is the actual uh, readme, which is the assessment from the, from the team of reviewers, like Andres, Justin, Chase, Vinay, uh, Robert and Martin as well. So um, this is really the last step. So we're asking, you know, uh, Dan, you specifically to take a look at that. Right. You don't need to read the 40 page document. <laughs> That's gonna take a while, but read the assessment. If you agree with it, just approve the PR so we can merge it in. And once we do that, uh, then the actual uh, assessment of Harbor is complete and we can uh, submit the formulation up to, uh, uh, to CNCF TOC for uh, proceeding with the Harbor graduation. When you say read the assessment, just to clarify, you mean read the summary? Yeah, yeah read, read, read the summary, the readme document in there. I believe that's the last step. Anybody else have any other things that they think that we should be doing? No, just for me, procedure perspective, we are pretty much done once it's... Okay finally approved and merged them so i think we're good uh, i think we need at least uh one chair approval right right yeah and that, that'll uh you know at present that'll fall on me um you know uh so dan you broke up a little bit i don't know if anybody else could hear you Dealing with me, unfortunately, for better or for worse, uh, and my um, uh, being a bit overloaded. Um, great, Michael. Well, uh, um, thank you so much. Uh, I, I appreciate your patience, and um, you know, I, I'm going to try to uh, you know get that pushed out and uh, you know wrapped up. And uh, um, do you we'll, think you uh, might be able yeah, to? It's only a one-page document. Do you think you might be able to read it today? I'm going to try. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Just basically, I, I'm also being asked by the TOC in terms of when we'll be able to land this up, and uh, I'm hoping to get it. Uh, and Amy is on the call too, so I think the next step for Harbor is basically to put it up for yep. a public vote. So. 
uh, you know, trying to line up everything. Thank you. Appreciate. Uh, thank you all. Yeah. I'll, I'll, Amy, Amy's been poking in front of me too. <laughs> thank you. you got, I'll jump out. Do your thing. <laughs> and now that Michael mentions that one question. Yes. As part of the bid for graduation, Michael has been requested by the TOC to produce a one or two liner from the SIG on, on the six position. Uh, that obviously factoring the assessment, but uh, not sure whether I should be doing that since I led the assessment. Michael has asked me to fill out this document that has a template that the TOC created, or if that should be a chair on behalf of the, of the SIG. The question is who should the person be? And if I should represent the SIG and making like, hey, here, here are concerns or there are no concerns and we're fine whether, I know typically the SIG does not get involved in saying, yes, you should graduate or, or not, but it sounds like they are expressively asking for that. Yeah, so essentially, uh, just to give a little more context, so the TOC is basically telling you, you looked at Harbor from a security standpoint, do you feel it has what it takes to support its bid towards graduation? That, that's essentially the question that's being asked. And, you know, Which is uh, above and beyond the assessment process, right? Uh, you know, sort of out, outside of the um, our, our sort of t standard processing and standard workflows of the assessment. Yeah. And you could actually reference the assessment and say, hey, we, we saw Harbor. There's a few areas that right. we think Harbor can improve. Here they are. Uh, we don't see any major concerns or we see major concerns up to you, wh whatever you want to say. <laughs> I'm echoing what, what the assessment writes, right? And then say, you know, uh, given the assessment and the time we spend with the harbor, we see X, Y, Z, either uh, support for graduation or not. Uh, I had is a... that the usual case for other projects? Is there a precedent for any other project? We are graduating? the first project that's trying to graduate that has been pushed through this process. Helm that started this graduation bit after Harbor was not asked to go through this process. Uh, Harbor has been the first project that has been asked to go through four SIGs and every SIG put us through the ringer. Nobody as much as you guys, but I loved it. I'm gonna complain, it was great. <laughs> so you, you guys you guys put the screws on me on this. So but, but it, it was very valuable and it was a great exercise. But given that this is the first time we're doing this, um, you know, all the other SIGs either gave positive or neutral recommendations. So um uh so make be aware that whatever recommendation you make is not going to be taken lightly by the TOC, but also make a recommendation that you feel comfortable with, right? Given the knowledge you have on Harbor and the things that we did during the review. Uh, but Dan, are you going to provide that recommendation or, or do you want to delegate that to Andres as the leader and the guy that worked with Harbor so far? Um, you know, it's going to be on me. Um, so I'll be drawing on, uh, you know, Justin and Andres, uh, in terms of, um, you know, their, their input, um, you know, since the, uh, the bulk of, um, you know, my recommendation is going to be, uh, you know, based on, on our, our assessment process. Um, but, uh, you know, th that, that, uh, um, that onus is on me with the support of, uh, my co-chairs. Okay, so I'll, I'll send you a Slack message on the CNCF Slack with the two things, the PR that you need to approve and then write the documentation. Thank if you can get them done today, uh, that would be incredible for us. It will kind of line up our timelines for moving Harbor ahead. Hey, Mike, Great, appreciate the feedback. Uh, uh, this is Vinay here. I just thought about something, maybe, you know, uh, maybe it's a precedent uh, and we could set uh, and eating our dog food, best practices perspective. What are your thoughts on, you know, uh, leveraging? Have we done like, uh, you know, from a vulnerability perspective and all that? I, I had this thought while going through the assessment, but you know, um, you know, you you said that the, this the, the artifacts are like some container images, etc. Right? You know, have they gone through some kind of a vulnerability scanning? And do we know what the posture is? Do we understand the the, uh, the 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 vulnerabilities that exist. How what are the severities and how we should uh, uh, perceive those? Uh, and then it can only strengthen uh, the argument that it's gone through a, a very good rigorous process as well. And add to that. A any any thoughts on that? 
So, so there's, uh, there's a couple of different things here. I'll try to outline them all uh, one by one. So Harbor uh, went through a complete vulnerability testing by VMware uh, in August of 2019. Um, after, uh, after that, in October of 2019, CNCF paid Cure 53 uh, and they spent two weeks on Harbor doing vulnerability and penetration testing. Um, and in both cases, we found a couple of issues. I think in the second case, it was uh, three uh, critical vulnerabilities. Sorry, one critical, three, three uh, high. We fixed them right away. Then we had one of our customers uh, that's a Singapore government agency that chartered uh, their own third party security testing company. And they did uh, an in-depth security vulnerability testing on Harbor. Uh, no issues were found. There was uh, no critical issues. And there's one issue that they want us to fix is a feature request that will enhance security, but not a gap, um, but not a, a vulnerability per se. It's a feature request. Um, and then we've talked to CNCF Chris uh, potentially down the line, uh, maybe a month or two from now, we can use a six security assessment that we created, that 30 page document that has a lot of insight, a lot of details and give it to a pen tester and tell them, given this heavy knowledge on Harbor, can you identify any ways you can break Harbor? Um, you know, that blast reduce dock and all that stuff. Now, I don't want to make our graduation be tied to that. We already did three pen tests on Harbor and they were very extensive. And, and, and but you know, we want to do one more because now we have a document that, that helps kind of give someone, basically it's a hacking blueprint. If you wanted to hack Harbor, here's all the things that you protect and here's everything that, that, you, that you should really worry about. And the way, the way I phrased it uh, to Chris is, um, you know, we have, the, we have this document, can we identify angles to attack Harbor using this assessment, right? So we're giving you the, we're not giving the keys to the kingdom, but we're giving you the blueprint of the kingdom. Can you figure out how to open some doors? Um, I really, really don't want to say in the assessment, go ahead and do this before you graduate. That would really <laughs> cripple us, right? That's something that we want to do because we think it's the right thing over time, but we already had three pen tests. If I can just make a historical comment separate from any concerns specifically about Harbor, when this whole SIG security assessment process was beginning, there was some pretty extensive discussion, and you can probably find it if you scroll down in the notes, about what the purpose of the SIG security assessment was. And at that time, as I recall, the, the drift of the conversation was that we're not here to say this product is secure um, because first off, that's not our jobs. And second off, that is such a temporally local state, even if it were to be true, but that rather the purpose of this assessment was to gauge more administrative information about a project, whether it has an approach to security that seems that will allow it to continue to adapt into the future, whether it seems to have been designed and implemented with thought given to security concerns and, and so on. And so if that is really the charter of this assessment process, then whether or not you go and do another pen test based on the, the process isn't really part of the scope. Um, but the fact that you want to is certainly a good sign. Anybody else who was there at that time want to comment on that? Or, or alternately, Dan, do you want to put on your, your hat and speak to that? That's correct. Uh, and, and Matthew, I know we do need to, to let you go. Um, so, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, where we net out, um, you know, I, I do think we want to, you know, encourage, uh, you know, uh, continued, um, you know, a follow on assessment, but, uh, you know, we are, we're not going to have a recommendation that uh, um, that should be gating for graduation. Right. I believe that's where we're, we are collectively aligned. Um, so, uh, you know, part of our posture is, uh, you know, making sure and, and, you know, to tell at this point, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, we're supporting the community and that, you know, projects like Harbor, um, you know, basically have a partner uh, in the CNCF to, 
uh, you know, navigate the, you know, the complex uh, uh, security landscape and uh, deliver the, the best possible cloud native experience. Sounds good. Thank you. Well, I look forward to you, Dan, reading really the, the PR and writing some of the details. Shouldn't take too long, but uh, thank you for your time. I'll send you the, I already sent you the metrics on Slack. Uh, thank you all for Got your it. time on Harbor. Really appreciate it. I don't know if I'm going to attend any more six security meetings, maybe not for a while, but uh, uh, I really enjoyed uh, your insight and thoughtfulness on both questions and design and, 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 uh, and recommendations. Appreciate it. Bye. We'll see you in the TOC meeting. All right. Yep. Take care. Bye. All right, hey, Matthew is going to take over facilitating. Thanks, Dan. Is my audio coming through? Great, thank you. Uh, pardon everyone, had to reinstall Zoom. That was a fun experiment at the last minute, unfortunately, <laughs> in a VM. Yay. Um, what, uh, where did we leave off? Were we, uh, did we already finish the check-in? And do we have any SIGs or working groups that need to check in? We, we, we didn't. Um, so Mark Underwood, I, I saw, has uh, a check-in. And uh, uh, honestly, uh, I was trying to, <laughs> we, you had a 20 minute, um, you know, get Michael uh, out, out the door, uh, you know, to his uh, double booking. Um, so uh, we also do need to, to uh, kind of bootstrap and get scribes, uh, you know, uh, embedded in, in the process. So, uh, um, you know, we, we, should, we should call out that as well. Sure. Uh, while we're on that topic then, uh, is there anyone that would like to volunteer to take meeting minutes or take the role of a scribe today? Is it just free form note taking? What's the general gist? That's sure. just however best feel would be done. <laughs> okay, thank you, Chase. All right, we got at least one for now. All right, so I'll move on then to the check in there and just see who has updates. I'll start with the uh, SIGs and working groups, and I think the one we have is Mark. So, Mark, good day. So, this I'll keep, uh, I'll keep short. The the phase two of the big data working group of which the security subgroup is the relevant piece here is trying to formulate its next iteration, which is a three year project. Uh, and the piece of this that I'm trying to help them formulate is supporting analytics as a service for computer security. Now, what that is, is gathering telemetry from products like say Prometheus as a good use case that is coming through in aggregate, i.e. transformed by some algorithm. We used to call it ETL, but you know, let's call it fancy, might have gone through some machine learning and you know, maybe you're getting log results as opposed to individual data points. Uh, but we're trying to abstract this into a different kind of interface. So we're looking for uh, some use cases and then uh, to partner with an open source tool that would let us build a working platform that people could use for testing the reference architecture for that project. So I'll just leave it at this as a, you know, there's two calls here. One is to help us formulate the use cases from a computer security point of view, privacy as well. And, and then secondarily, you know, some volunteers to help us uh, stand up a suitable a test environment that works with that. And, and we had separately planned to bring uh, the Cloud Mesh team uh, to do a presentation here, but uh, that's an academic liaison and they're in finals, believe it or not at this point at University of Indiana. So we'll have to reschedule that until that's all over with. So that's it for now, really no immediate action items, but looking for volunteers to help us uh, shape this program, which I think would be pretty novel for the security products. And of story. Thank you, Mark. Sorry, please go ahead. The obvious question is how does one reach out to volunteer? Yeah, I'll put my, uh, I'll put my contact information into the chat. Just ping me, that'll get you there. Acknowledged. Super. Thanks all. Are there any questions or comments for Mark? Okay, thank you, Mark. Okay, moving ahead to the agenda. I don't see any updates. So if anyone was missed and had an update or didn't get a chance to put your 
name here in the attendance. I'll make sure to double back at the end of the meeting. I don't see any presentations or PRs slated, so I suspect this will be a bit shorter than usual. So I'd like to just throw one out there um, off the off the off the cuff sort of thing. And it was one that uh, Justin Capos brought up, and it was uh, 376 uh, with respect to just uh, security posture in Zoom. So I'm not going to go into the broader topic of one versus another, how we do our whole workflow for uploading videos to YouTube. But I was wondering if it'd be appropriate to put up maybe some instructions on how to spin up a VM or container for both Windows, um, sorry, Windows host OSs and Linux host OSs. So if people feel that that's uh, appropriate, here's a way you can containerize it and or throw it in a VM and just get it going really quickly. I tried out that uh, Microsoft um, Internet Explorer test virtual machine image, but I don't know if licensing for it is such that we can officially recommend download this 90 day free VM and use it for all of our official correspondence. I suspect that's going against the spirit of why it's being released. Uh, does anyone have any strong opinions for or against if we threw together a few ways for people to continue to use Zoom, but in a container? I think that would at least tackle part of what was brought up in Justin's PR. Can you post a link to that PR in the chat if you have it? Because I, I did a cursory search and didn't find it. Here. Uh, see if I uh, sure here it's number 376 it should be I think third or fourth from the top of the um, issues here let me get that now so, yeah, oh, I, I got it I don't know how I missed it oh good uh, yeah that's the ticket though so I don't think that what I'm proposing addresses what Justin brought up it it's in the same spirit though here's how you throw it in a VM and I'm wondering if sending that out, uh, if other people want to use it is appropriate or does that inadvertently make a, a statement, if at all politicized, like is that something we'd want to steer away from by making a statement saying, you know, we only trust this if it's in a VM. No, I think it has, you know, you could think of the VM as being a cyber range, you know, a low budget cyber range. So if it's framed in that way, that's not a bad thing. I mean, okay. if I send I mean, on the other hand, in the apparently 20 days since Justin opened this issue, the news has been all filled with other similar tools having similar problems, which kind of makes it look more like it's just whoever people are focusing on finding issues in at the time and that this sort of software, which is complicated by its very nature and rushed to market by the forces that that make it happen will all be kind of bad and and that therefore singling out zoom specifically may not actually be as good of an idea as it may have seemed 20 days ago true i don't intend to say pick on zoom and not blame anyone is but since it's the de facto tool we're all using i figured it maybe if i put a certain spin on it saying hey here's how you can deploy it quickly in a vm or a container for whatever reasons there may be, like I, rather than me qualifying it, just present it as here so you can get it going pretty quickly if you want to containerize it because you're, because one is say paranoid like me and runs everything in an isolated sandbox or something. I guess if I take the qualification out and don't try and specify why I'm doing it, just saying here it is, I figured that would be appropriate without uh, making it look like SIG security is taking a particular stance on it. I thought that might be the happy middle If ground. this is a choice you <laughs> wish to make, here is a method that has been used successfully kind of thing. Right. All yours. Okay. Yeah, I, I like this. Like, I, I mean, there are people that run Chrome or Firefox in the VM, right? So I don't think it's out of, out of the ordinary for someone in the security uh, kind of uh, space to to create a script that does this. So I, I don't like as long as it's not. We don't say that it's not secure. Therefore, you should do this. Just like it's a value add. Okay, I feel that aligns with what I'm going at. Don't say why, but just say here's a nice little thing for convenience. And then I'm sure anyone that has any pre-existing stance or opinion on it can infer what they want. That way we don't look like we're being mean to them and not to every other provider. Chase, you had a, a comment that I wanted to jump in. 
Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, uh, no objection, but that's all sort of adjacent uh, to, I think, the original ticket. And I was trying to see if Justin is not on this call. Um, so that's unfortunate. Some small amount of background color on, on Zoom verse. Um, about two years ago, we moved to Zoom internally where I work for a few things, um, partially because they have uh, reasonable Linux support and we have a <clears throat> pretty hardcore contingent of, I won't ever install anything, not Debian users. Um, and we picked apart their client and came up with just all kinds of ungodly problems, uh, mostly surrounded around embedded libraries that were years and years old um, and then kind of the fallout from that and of course you can use the browser version or whatever but long story short a couple of years ago we prodded them with a pretty sharp stick and we're small potatoes but you know uh, have some notoriety and so nobody wants to see their name in lights next to ours in a bad way and we worked with them to fix those things and then about a year later, we did another audit and it was the exact same shit, right? So they fixed the point in time stuff, but it's their release process, what have you, that has the issue. There's no addressing it without working at their company and fixing CI or something. Um, so they just don't have their shit together, to be perfectly honest. And it is what it is. And right now we're working on an internal recommendation for our people and our stuff because we have folks all over the globe, a bunch of affiliates, all that. And we're essentially recommending that no one discuss anything um, sensitive over Zoom. We're not outright banning the client, mm -hmm. although that is the de facto. Um, so I don't know that it's a, uh, a case where it's a bunch of equals. I think Zoom in particular uh, had got wide adoption and a lot of cool features by cutting some corners. It's pretty obvious mm -hmm. from a long-term mitigation with them uh, and partnership in other places. And I can't share all that, but let me just say it's a mess. Um, and I don't know what prevents us from using another tool and I don't, it's fine. I'm, I have dispensation to use it for this either way, but um, if we were going to move away from it, that seems like sort of what the task is is getting at and I guess we should just say no and that's okay but I worry about incomplete guidance right like here's how you run something in a VM or whatever no rationale as to why in general bad information is almost always worse or in general incomplete information is always almost always worse than no information when it comes to security because people start making assumptions so Anywho, that's the thing I was going to say. Yeah. With respect Thanks, to Jason. libraries, I don't want to mangle uh, Justin or Dan's words, but I at least know that some of the reasons were uh, that we already have the whole, say, work end to end workflow in place. So the meetings are scheduled, they're automatically recorded, and then uploaded to YouTube. And then I think the bigger thing is that the CNC app essentially chooses the tool that propagates down to all of the other SIGs and working groups. And I think one of the points Justin brought up is since we're SIG security, maybe we should try and push this change back upstream and see if we can propagate and spread that out based on a strong enough case. I think some of that might be in the ticket, but I'd have to read it. But that's as yeah. far as my yeah. memory goes on the topic. So there's at least a reason why we're using it, but it doesn't mean it's the right one, but it is what it is. So, you know, the, the issue that Justin created, uh, you know, already sort of establishes enough of the context of like, hey, SIG security is worried about this thing. Um, you know, Matthew, what you're, you're proposing uh, to lay out how um, you're potentially addressing, um, you know, not uh, Justin's, uh, you know, broader suggestion to move away from the tool, uh, but how to, um, you know, bring, uh, you know, the, the, the tool, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, protect ourselves a, a bit, um, you know, with, with some unknowns, um, you know, that, that uh, you know, 
provide some context, uh, but uh, you know, won't actually give us to get us to the next re um, resolution point. In terms of finding that resolution point, um, whew, my goodness, it, like um, there, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of in, in one of those scenarios where um, you know the the current solution is, is you know suboptimal, but uh, you know, there's no breakout, um, you know, uh, better solution that is going to, um, you know, come in and uh, do everything that we need. So, um, you know, we're, we're still iterating towards what could be a recommendation uh, to the CNCF on a, a path forward. So, you know, documenting how we're, um, how we're, uh, protecting ourselves, uh, you know, dealing with, with, uh, you know, situation at, at present and, uh, um, you know, doing what we can to, to move things forward. Um, you know, uh, meeting, meeting with the tech leads, um, you know, I, I pushed back on switching over to, to Hangouts because, uh, I've had some issues where, um, if a, um, if the person who, who created the calendar event, it's so tied to, you know, Google calendar. Um, if, so, if the person that, that, uh, created the calendar event isn't on the call, that means that you've got to scramble and set up an entirely, uh, new meeting. So, um, you know, Hangouts is a, is a great sort of sensible default when, uh, it's a small, uh, contingent of folks and, you know, very consistent participation. Um, but, uh, you know, um, we have an ongoing weekly meeting, um, where, uh, we have folks, you know, coming in, coming out, um, you know, different facilitators, uh, different coordinators, different, um, you know, uh, situations, uh, every week, uh, and, uh, you know, replicating that is, uh, going to be, you know, uh, a fair amount of effort. I have a, one thing to add on a related tool. It's uh, the feature is a way, quite a ways out, so I don't anticipate seeing it until at least a couple of years from now. But I think Signal is uh, considering doing peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, distributed uh, uh, encrypted conversations and whatnot. So that'll be pretty interesting to see which way that goes. If they could decouple it a little bit from uh, having to have a phone or an account with it, then it might modernize uh, secure communication somewhat similar to Peer Guardian or PGP years back, just set up like uh, yeah. public-private keys for each conversation and then renew them and can't ask for much more and you take out the centralized servers. But again, it's way out there. I might contribute to it if I feel so qualified and so inclined. I just like to make a pitch. Right. You know, so, so we, 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 you know, we, we have our forum, um, but you know, it, uh, as a uh, a SIG, it's a lunch group in the CNCF. One of our duties is also to, um, you know, kind of be transparent and, and share uh, the work that we do. Uh, and, you know, the way we've got, um, you know, everything lined up is, you know, we've got recordings and, and that gets published out to, to YouTube. Um, so, you know, peer to peer, the challenge with peer to peer is, is it ends up uh you know making that distribution and transparency um you know opportunity um a bit more challenging um you know i i i run a um a meetup here in san francisco and you know we you know we're sheltering in place and and uh, uh you know couldn't uh, you know run our normal meetup and we did it um, you know, virtually, and you know, we had you know the jankiest system uh, set up with uh, OBS, um, and you know, we, ha we ended up having to you know split out um, you know who's running uh, you know the Zoom client for everybody uh, and who's doing the OBS uh, you know stream out to um, YouTube. It was a mess, and uh, sounds fun. I think your audio cut out for I don't hear your audio coming through Dan is it just me no I don't hear anything 
Yeah, sorry, Dan. Um, for about the past 15 seconds, uh, it does not appear that you're muted, but we don't hear any audio from you. Maybe it's the mic or something. Was that directed to me? Uh, there we go. Now we hear your voice. We, we lost sorry, the other uh, 20 seconds ago. I, I lost my headset. Um, so um, I was I was trying to wrap up. Um, <laughs> move on. So um, I don't know what what got dropped. Sorry. Oh good. Okay. So sorry. there's that. Uh, yeah, I wanted to bring yeah. up uh, ad hoc. Uh, there's. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chase. I was just going to reflect back. Uh, you were talking about kind of the pitfalls of trying the peer-to-peer -peer route. That was sort of the last uh, right. that we heard, I believe. So, Oh, so, so my closing comment is uh, convenience is killing us. <laughs> could, could I say one last thing? Uh, and I'm sorry for talking so much before we move on. Um, so maybe the only real concern I have here is if we were really to discover something that was uh, zero day esque right and it's for some product that's out there in the wild in a bunch of places this is mm -hmm. not a medium that i would feel comfortable disclosing it in um so right. my my thought is instead of documenting how to make this a little safer let's just document what happens when we because all of this should be considered public area right? i'll get the blood mm -hmm. whatever whatever it is. maybe let's just document what we do in the case of non-public you know, information, right. non-public disclosure. I think that might be the the better compromise. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I like that position, Chase. You know, because this this is broadcast, uh, you know, to to YouTube every week. So, um, you know, this this is you know not not a forum uh, for any um, you know responsible disclosure. On a related note, I've had this question for a while, and I've been keep forgetting to ask it. Uh, as a tame example, my five-year-old decided to make a, a little cameo not too long ago on the video stream. Uh, who do we reach out to if we wanted to say cut or edit the YouTube videos that get auto-uploaded to the CNCS page? Just if we need, you know, we realize, oh, this probably shouldn't be in the yeah. recording yeah. on YouTube. You, got you. It's cool. Thank you. Sorry, your audio is coming through. It's like modulated, like half a second of audio, half a second mute, like something's gating or square waving the audio, at least for me. Oh, your mic is muted. Okay. Um, you know, um, if, if, if folks didn't get that, it's uh, uh, Amy um, would be the person. Thank you. Okay, there's no more PRs on the list. I'll just double check in case anything's been added to the agenda, but no presentations, no additional PRs. So with that being the I case- I thought Robert had well. uh, a working group um, comment that- uh... Yeah, I just, uh, I think I missed the early opportunity, but uh, we did have our eight o'clock uh, meeting this morning. Uh, we talked about a policy violation CRD proposal uh, for capturing uh, whether it's you know something like an OPA or Caverno or even you know other uh, Falco or others that want to capture a standardized format of a policy violation, there's there's been a proposal to make a CRD for that, and then we just briefly kind of uh, touched base with the gatekeeper folks who had a version of this conversation, uh, and we discussed kind of the pros and cons of CRDs versus native support and. Essentially, we're, we're going to follow up if anyone's interested at the SIG auth meeting next at 11. Uh, they're going to talk about dynamic audit. So I think that will overlap as well. So we're at some point, maybe we'll try to collect all these threads into a coherent proposal. But we're still trying to figure out if that's even possible. That was it. And just, just to clarify one thing, SIG auth is um, CNCS SIG auth, or is that uh, still Kubernetes? Uh, I, I think this is the Kubernetes SIG auth. Okay. Yeah, okay. So that's, uh, yeah, Kubernetes SIG auth. They're uh, 11 o'clock to noon today, so right after this. 
and they have uh, two discussions about dynamic audit proxy webhook design and dynamic webhook syncs with static policy. So there could be overlap. Okay. Well, with that, we've got everything on the agenda, formal agenda out of the way. I'm just going to open the floor, and if there's anyone that I haven't called out or neglected to, or if there's any new attendees today that'd like to introduce yourselves, uh, now's your chance. Okay, looks like we're good for today then. Have a great rest of the day, everyone, and pardon for my <laughs> delay earlier today. Oh, good. Thanks. Be Thanks, safe. Matthew. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.